A lot of us, mediocrity is everywhere right now. And we're all trying to find an easy way out. And we're judging ourselves. Let's say there's 10 people in this room and we're all mediocre. But I'm the best of the mediocre people. I now think I'm great. I'm great. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling, that challenging feeling that, of, of that person who's waking up at 3.30 in the morning and saying, hey, put your shit on, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. We'll take a day off, man. We'll get a pizza and shit, watch the game. We like that. We, we love that feeling. Why? Because you understand, man, we're good, bro. We don't want that motherfuckers like this. Hey, man, no, bro. Get your fucking shit on, man. Stop being a punk. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in ours. That's the mediocrity of life. We want to be the best amongst the average people. People wonder, how do you stay hungry all the time? Because after I accomplish something, I don't sit back like a lot of guys who graduate buds, graduate this, graduate that. They get comfortable. They wonder why I'm getting weak, man. I don't know, I lost my edge. What's going on? Because once you hit the top of the fucking mountain, guess what happened? I'm good. I'm good, so you wonder why you're falling down now. Because once you reach the top of the mountain, you gotta build a fucking another one. That's mediocrity. There's a lot of people in mediocrity who have a nice resume, but they're one-timers, man. They hit, they hit a one-time deal, they busted it open, got a lot of money, but they're good. You're mediocre now, man. What are you fucking doing today, tomorrow, the next fucking day? That's why I don't listen to theorists. I don't listen to all that bullshit. I don't listen to a motherfucker who's like this, man. What's wrong, man? I'm fucking tired, dude. Why are you tired? Because tomorrow, I gotta do the fucking shit again, man. Whatever the shit is that made me fucking nauseous and sick to my stomach, it made me hurt. There's no ending. And that's the person I listen to. That's the person who's gained knowledge. You gain knowledge through suffering. And on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You don't find yourself in over here. You find yourself on the other end. Like, like the 100 mile race I was on, I ran it for 24 hours. I found myself on the other end of that fucking race. That 19 hours, I found, wow, there's a whole nother fucking world out here that I've never even saw, but the world's in your mind. And that's what all that mediocrity is about. Mediocrity is contagious. Not giving civilized is about having a savage mentality. Civilized is something where people, um, it's, a, it's, it's a comfortable world. A lot of us say, you know, like for instance, I see these athletes right now who retire, you know, I'm 38, you know, I'm 39. I did 20 years at the top of my game, and I'm chilling out now. You see them a year later, and how they look. What the hell just happened to you, dude? What the hell? You're one of the greatest athletes of all time. Kids looked up to you. Women, men of all ages looked up to you. And they hit the pinnacle where it's time to retire, and their mind says, Whew, I'm civilized. The worst thing that could ever happen to any human being is they become civilized. It's that total accountability, like even when you retire, there's a motherfucker looking at me and judging me right now, man. I'm, I was the baddest person to ever live. It doesn't go away, man. You gotta wake up, even though you retired, you never retired. You're setting the example every single day of your life. And being civilized feels so good, but I'm sorry, man. Once you get to the top, you may retire, but you ain't never coming back home, man, because now you're judged. People see you falling off. You want to be that guy who knows I may be retired from the sport or forever I did, but I'll be damned if you ever see me looking like shit, feeling like shit, not arriving. People, I've arrived. I've arrived mentality. You're always setting the example. Civilization feels so good. These comfortable feelings,
are what people want. They want retirement. They want that. They need that. They, it's a, it's a yearning feeling. I want it too. People love putting a label on me about, my God, man, you're just wired different. I'm not fucking wired different, dude. I'm thinking right now, after I got past my stuttering thing, now I'm on a roll, I'm good now. You know what I'm thinking about right now? I gotta fucking wake up tomorrow and do the same shit again. I gotta leave this fucking interview and go stretch out for two and a half hours. I hate that shit. <laughs> but guess what it does though? I'm constantly callousing over my victim's mentality that I once had growing up. Every day you have to do this shit. Cause why? When you stop doing it, you don't just maintain it. If you stop shooting a gun, you're not gonna be a great shot if you pick a gun up a year from now. The only way to keep from getting rusty is to constantly oil that motherfucking machine. The machine is this. You gotta keep challenging it every day. That's all I'm talking about. Like your, your biggest enemy, your biggest, the most important conversation you will ever have in your fucking life is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it, eventually you're gonna act on it. Whether you're good or bad, you have to. That's why the whole thing about this book I have, it's about you. It is about you. It's strictly about you finding who you are. So many people live a hundred years, never fucking know who they are. Never know who they are. You have to look in that mirror and know this, there's so much more in here, man. Because I can literally right now be a 300 pound guy spraying for cockroaches still to this day. If I did not look in that mirror and say, there, there has to be more to this. This can't be it. And then willing to go into it, dive deep into it and give all I have to find it. So that's what, it's, that's what all that's about. Man, we're, we're scared to dive into our lives. What made us who we are? The beautiful people that we are, we're all jacked up in so many ways. That's the beauty of us. That's the beauty of me. I'm jacked up, but I figured out my own little process on how to get unjacked up and how to, I'm not gonna get the same, you know, I'm not gonna get the same way you're gonna get there. You may get there by going point A to point B. I may go point C to D to E to F. I'm gonna be there the same way you are, just a little harder. That's how I trained my brain. I actually drove my car to the, to the daggone um, airport and watched planes take off. Because I was like, I'm gonna be on one of those planes one day going to Air Force boot camp. So I, I never, I always fixed the things on the surface. So if I couldn't read and write, I learned to read and write. I, I, I would always fix these things on the surface level. And so whenever something hard would, 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 like, would like raise his ugly head, I didn't have any kind of tools to handle it. Like, man, I thought I fixed this already, man. But no, I didn't go deep into the dungeon of my soul to say, okay, what is making you a quitter? What is making you a weak man? What is making you afraid? And so that's why I kept on quitting and going back to start or not knowing how to get through hard times. And that's why I was telling people, I'm not a theorist. I didn't study, like, you know, I didn't study a fucking book. I literally put myself in a fire repeatedly like a sword. You put a sword in the fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If you, if you keep on doing that, you're gonna get a nice sword. And then you keep on beating it. You gotta beat the shit out of it. And that's what I am. Yeah. I, I became that, I, I, I said, okay, we, we can't quit. We gotta figure out why you are this pussy. What is wrong with you? What's going on here? So I kept on putting the sword back in the daggone fire and I just beat it harder. Before I knew it, I started realizing, hmm, all right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. The brain is starting to get hard. I'm no longer a theorist. I'm now a practitioner. I put it in hell. I dissected it while it's in hell because you can't dissect anything in a normal environment. You can't dissect anything in 72 degree weather. You must right. put it in the fucking freezer and freeze the fuck out of it. And then you dissect it. Dissect it when it's miserable. Dissect the brain when all it's thinking about is I need to get out of here, man. I want to get out of the fucking freezer. Open the door. And he said, nah, five more seconds, man. Five more seconds in the freezer. And that's when you start to pick that brain apart. And that's what all this stuff did to me. I kept on putting myself back into the freezer or the fire and beating the shit out of myself, mentally and physically. 
Before I knew it, this is what happened. It almost chokes me up now. Um, so I get the VFW award for the, uh, for the uh, Americanism Award for military service and giving back. I'm as human as human can be. That's why what you see is what you do. Um, at that moment when I was giving my speech, I thanked my uncle for being there. I got to my mom. It wasn't just about her. It was, I, 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 I know what she went through. I know what I went through. And we got knocked down so much. I had a moment in front of all these great American heroes where I had a chance. It was like so fast. It went through me like, like lightning. Uh, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm getting the award like this. That, that kid who was in the fetal position the majority of his life. And so much the fact that my body and my hip flexors are tight to this day. That even though I was standing erect, my mind was in the fetal position. And when I looked out amongst all those people, it was a sense of pride that <clears throat> I can't even, I can't even explain. It's the moments of three hell weeks. It's the moments of in that room by myself studying for hours and hours and I was trying to catch up with all the kids who were above me. It's just those moments, like the real raw moments of life that was like, boom, hit me, and we're gone. But I was like, I did that. I overcame this shit. You know, it's like, it's power behind all that shit. And that's the feeling I was looking for in my life. I found it. it wasn't money, it wasn't fame, it wasn't awards. It was that feeling I have right now. I feel like I'm about to break down, but it's not of like, oh my God, I'm upset. It's like I worked myself so hard that I turned a person this fucked up into this motherfucker right here. Not off of reading a fucking book off a of theorist, off of going to work on myself and saying, I don't know how to do this, but I know that to get over there to that fucking side, I gotta grind myself into a fucking fine power. And I did it. I did it off a sure will. And very few people will know how that feels. Very few. You have to create someone else. Not like you have two different personalities. It is you, but you have to find strength. And that visualization of almost me cracking out Goggins, like almost like that Superman cape, like, like, like I'm coming out a different person, a person that doesn't give a fuck about anything, who doesn't care about being judged, who knows I'm weak, who knows I'm afraid, who says, whatever you think about me, take it, whatever, I'm here. That's Goggins. In the dark room, you face yourself, you realize you want to be better, you realize you don't want to be this weak, insecure person in the world who has all these problems that we all have. We all have. Social media is a great platform to tell you who we want to be, not who we are. So that's where that dark room is. My book I talk about a lot. Um, it was my junior year in high school and I fell back a lot. I fell back in this fucking hole of life. The second you think that you've overcome it, you climbed Everest, you're on that last hold and life will say, <laughs> not today, motherfucker. And it'll push you down. And my junior year in high school, I uh, missed a whole bunch of school, was lying to my mom, had like a one point something GPA. I was just jacked up. I mean, it was, it's, I was in one, one of the worst spots of my life. And my mom was going through a lot of shit too. And she didn't have time to sit back and baby me. And it was me against me. My pants were down to my knees. I was just, I was not, whatever was going on, I was in a bad shape. So I went to the bathroom and I had this weird haircut because I wanted attention. I was an attention getter. I went to an all white school pretty much. Um, some of the kids liked me, a lot of them didn't like me, whatever, didn't fucking matter. I was looking for something. So I would dress differently, crazy haircuts. And I went to the mirror and the reflection in it revealed a lot of bad things. A lot of things that I was hiding behind the saggy pants. 
And I'm looking at myself in the mirror going like, God, dog, dude, you got You are something else, man. Like you have created a character. I want to be at the cool guy table. And whatever I could do to, to, to get attention, I did. It wasn't me. It wasn't who I was inside, but I was scared for anybody to know who I was inside. So in that accountability mirror, I call it, I got real with myself. And I said, you have a, a third grade reading level, which is hard to admit when you're a junior in high school that you copied them, every single thing you did because of fear, they're gonna put me in a special school. We all know what special means. I'm gonna have a, a title on myself the rest of my life. And being cool, you don't have a title on yourself. So I started cheating. I was dumb. And people say, oh, you know, you had a learning disability. I had a learning disability, but I realized I was lazy. So um, I called myself out there. I called myself out every which way possible. I didn't call myself out, I was just honest. I was honest. Look at yourself, man. Look at yourself. And it was that day, in a couple of days after that, I just got real with myself. And every day I came home, I called the accountability mirror. What am I gonna do today to change what I see in this mirror? What am I gonna do today? And a lot of it was, I stopped sitting with the cool guys. I actually tucked my shirt in with the school looking like, hey man, this is how I'm gonna look. If you don't like it, so be it. I had to really wear this, this, this layer of skin. I had to develop a really callous skin on me to, to take whatever you're gonna call me, you're gonna call me. Whatever I'm gonna be, you know, I want a geek, but whoever I am, you're gonna see me. You're gonna see me for who I am because I need to change who I'm not. And that accountability mirror just, just became raw. And when I became fat over the years, I fell back in the hole, I called myself fat because I was fat. And people don't want to do that. They want to say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who the fuck you are, nothing's going to change. And in this nice new world that we live in, we want to hear, you're just a little big. No, man, you might be fat. And it's okay to hear that from yourself and from everybody else. So that's where it started at. And it's raw. It, it gets ugly sometimes with me in that mirror. But I'm also proud of myself to be able to tell myself that and then fix what's in that mirror. You know what? Because first of all, it does set you free mentally. And it gives you a starting point. You have to have the truth to have a starting point. So when you, like, it, if I'm lying to you about who I am, or I'm lying to you about whatever, there's no starting point. There's a false reality. Right. You have to create the real reality. So that's what I call my accountability mirror in my book. That's the real reality. Where the fuck am I gonna start from? So for me, I was lying to this, lying about that. So I had no starting point. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. All right, <laughs> I'm not real smart. I have no courage, I have no self-esteem, I have no nothing, nothing. That's my starting point. Now we can move from there. But if I tell myself I'm strong, I have courage, I'm smart, and all these are lies, you continuously push that starting point backwards. So that starting point is the truth. The no fucking bullshit truth that only you can tell yourself. So it's the starting point, the truth is the starting point. Especially nowadays in this society, we like to surround ourselves. It makes us feel so good. Those people who say, it's okay. It's okay, it's not okay. It isn't okay, man. And I, and I get it, society's changing and we love to feel wanted and loved. Trust me, that's all important, it right. is. But you have to have the truth from people, hey, you're not working your butt off hard enough. You're not trying hard enough. We all think we're trying hard, but what are you gauging that off of? Are you gauging off of, like I talked to this one kid the other day, college is kicking my ass. I said, what are you gauging that off of? I go, are you trying? He goes, yeah, I'm trying my ass off. I'm studying hard. I go, what are you gauging trying hard off of? Well, in high school, I didn't have to try at all. And I made great grades. In college, I'm trying hard. You're trying hard compared to what you did in high school, which was it came easy to you. So your reality is something that you created off of something easy. So you trying hard is two hours of studying. I'm gonna tell you a difference in trying hard and trying hard. Trying hard is something in your mind just doesn't stop. 
we, we're, we know two hours isn't enough. So it's all about, you know, reality in what you're basing things off of. I believe that most human beings are only living at about 40% of their capability. So the mind has a governor, like a car. If you're driving a car and the car has a governor on it, the car may say 130 miles an hour, but the governor is set for 91. Once that governor sets in, you get to 91, that car starts doing this. The car wants to go. The car wants to go, but that fucking factory said, uh-uh, we're not going past 91. We have a factory, a nice governor in our brain, and it's a survival mechanism. It protects us from pain and suffering. The second we feel that shit, our mind says, oh no, this isn't fun. We should back off. We should sit down, find something more comfortable. And there's something about the mind. The mind has the tactical advantage over you at all times. At all times of your life, the mind has a tactical advantage over you. Why is that? It knows what you're afraid of. It knows your insecurities. It knows your deep, dark lies. And it starts to push you away from that shit. It pushes you in a direction that is comfortable. The mind controls everything. So what I realized was that when I was growing up and I was 300 pounds and I got all fat and I got all insecure, I realized that my mind kept taking me in this direction when things got uncomfortable for me, when I was facing my insecurities, I was facing my fears, my mind said, oh no, we have a tactical advantage. We need to get you, separate you from this feeling. This feeling over your life is all about feelings. We want the happy feeling. We don't want that feeling of this sucks. Why am I here? And you don't have any, so, so you can't answer those questions, so you leave. I started realizing that if in that moment you can answer those fucked up questions and you are now in charge of your brain versus your brain ruling you, that's where all that stuff comes from. So, so, so the 40% rule is all of that. You get to 40%, your brain says, we're done. Let's roll, man. This is starting to get painful. This is uncomfortable. So you sit down. You have to figure out ways, and everybody's different. That's how the book kind of talks about, like we all have these things about, you know, five steps to this and, and four steps to this. It's, it's a lot more than that. That's all bullshit. It's, it's a practice that you have to, it's a habit. So if you know that at 40%, I'm, you know, I'm feeling pain. At 40%, I'm feeling pain. That's where the 40% rule kicks in. Now it starts, okay, I'm, I'm feeling pain. My mind's saying all this shit to me. It's saying, get out of here, run, flee. The fight or flight kicks in. Okay, we're done, we're not good enough. It starts telling you all these things. You start to believe it, because the mind controls all. This is the time where you have to gain control back of your mind. It's okay, let me see if I can go 45%. And once you start giving yourself more and more hope, and start realizing, okay, the mind starts to be, okay, what, what are you doing? We're supposed to be going right, and you're going left. You start then controlling your mind. Start finding more in, you know, in yourself. And it goes from 40% to a lot further than that. But that's the start of it though. Get to, get to the spot where your mind is saying stop. Wherever that is, you gotta get there first. And then that's when that shit starts to work for you. You gotta control yourself in that moment. A lot of people can live with themselves. That's the first thing. A lot of people can live with themselves, look in the mirror and say, I'm okay with being afraid. I'm okay with going on this easy highway over here. The easy highway has all these fucking signs and shit, directions how to get somewhere. And you have to first be uncomfortable with how you feel about yourself. With that voice that a lot of us like to run away from, we all have it. We all have that voice that's saying, hey man, you know, you're, you're kind of wimping out right now. You're kind of being a little punk right now. But a lot of us say, okay, if that's okay. It's okay to tell these little white lies to ourselves. So we first have to face the real you. The real me is David Goggins. The real me is the guy looking at you right now saying, I don't want to fucking be on this show right now because I used to stutter as a kid. And I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid that here in a second, I'm going to start fucking stammering and stuttering and the whole world is going to know that I have all these issues. But that's when I see right now, okay Goggins, you got to go on this fucking show. That's Goggins. Goggins is saying, okay David Goggins, you're a punk. Life made you this way. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. We can't be afraid of what the fuck people right now are looking at me saying about me. We cannot be afraid of that. That's Goggins. Goggins saying, fuck all of you who don't like me, who don't want to. And that person then comes in. 
But you have to be David Goggins and say, man, I'm afraid of this. I'm fucked up here. Life made me this way here. I stutter. I, I have these issues with, with, with uh, reading and writing and, and I'm, I'm, I'm fat and I'm insecure. You have to face that in that dark room. In that dark room is who you are. But in that dark room is where you have to create another human being that walks out of that dark room to face who you are. That's the only way you're gonna get over all those things. How do I do it? How am I able to do what I do on a daily basis? You know, how do I fight the demons? Because they hear me speak and I'm very raw and real. How do you fight my insecurities, all these things? And uh, I, they're there every day. They're there every day. Like you said, I'm in search for a feeling. I'm not in search for a trophy. I'm not in search for love. I'm not in search for more followers on Instagram or social media. When I started this journey years ago, and I realized that I'm going to be somebody, and I'm searching for a feeling, a feeling of true victory for myself, and only myself. The second I shut out the whole world and realized that one thing, that I am in this world alone. I'm fighting in this race by myself. Yeah, I'm all about people, I'm all about team, I'm all about that shit, but I'm really all about right now and in my life just like you said, no one knows the real truth about me, how hard I really go. I don't care if anybody knows. I don't want anybody to know. I'm an introvert. I live an introverted life, and I love that about me. It, that right there is my fuel, is I know that there's really no one out there grinding like me. And if they are, so be it. If I know about you, I'll make sure that uh, my gang that's what the mentality is all about. My whole thing is a mentality thing. Like I told you the last time I was on the show, I viewed myself as the weakest person on the planet Earth. My goal in life was to, in my mind, believe I'm the hardest man alive. And that's why the whole thing is can't hurt me. That's what it's about. It's about whatever you think you are, you have to make that dream a reality. But that's where the hard part is is making that dream reality. That's where the hard work comes. That's where people know, how do you keep grinding every day? You have to make those insecurities, those fears. Like when I was 300 pounds, I didn't have any drive. I'm gonna go be a Navy SEAL. What kind of stupid shit is that, 300 pounds? It wasn't like a drive to go be a Navy SEAL. I was an insecure, lying kid, afraid. I had to look in my insecurities and in my fear and find drive in that. We're all looking for passion passions all around you you have a whole sh a whole fucking stack of it all around you it's your insecurities all that shit you gotta dive deep in that shit all it's, it's all in there all the energy and fuel you need is right in yourself it's all there you got a lot of stuff to do to overcome and you know that's where I found it I found it right there in my own insecurities I found drive in my own insecurities and that's that's the most powerful thing in the world when you can find drive in your own doubt, fear, insecurities, you become very unstoppable. I believe in a higher power. Don't know the name, don't know where it's coming from, don't know anything like that. But I believe that this power, and visualize me real quick. Let's say it's a man up there, or a woman, whatever, and they have a chart. And when you're born, they say David Goggins. Born February 17th, 1975 at 6 a.m. They write the chart down because they can see everything. They know exactly what you're so fucking supposed to be. They know what you're supposed to be. Go to so-called heaven. You arrive at heaven, I'm 300 pounds. I retired as an Ecolab guy, which is okay. Just a job, whatever. I go up there and God looks at me and he shows me my chart. And my chart on there says you were supposed to be a Navy SEAL. You're supposed to weigh 185 pounds. You're supposed to be one of the smartest people on the planet, this, this, all this. You see this. And now you're in heaven, you made it to heaven, but you're like, God, Doug, I was supposed to live that life. I was supposed to live that life. And then you find out that the reason why, because we all think that if we pray on it, if we do this, if we do that, whatever, if we don't work, we just, whatever, it's going to magically happen for us. No. 
I believe that when I'm all said and done with, my whole job is to outwork the chart. Whatever the fucking chart says about me, the all-knowing power up there, I want to get up there and say, him look at me and say, I know everything. I didn't fucking see this. I didn't fucking see this. I want to feel that. I want to get to the other end of this fucking world and however I'm being judged, whoever's judging me, to look at me and say, I did not fucking know. I, I had you at 185, had you at this, but all this other shit, I was riding as you were living it. I want to, I want to find more, all I can. And in that fucking sack of shit, you have to dive in that to find more. Because if you're not willing to go in there and face yourself, you're not gonna find anything. You can live right here on surface, man, right here on surface. So if there is an ending to this world and there is somewhere to go and there's a judgment, you're gonna get there and you might see a chart and that chart may tell you who the fuck you should have been. And now you get the rest of your life to think about that. Man, I could have lived a much better life if I just would have just suffered a little bit more. If I just would have went in that shit and realized I had so much more but fear and the 40% and living here versus living here, being afraid, stop me. So that's, I, I'm a big guy in visualizing. I'm a, I'm a big guy in making a world, it may not exist. To me, it does. To me, it does. And I'm, I'm overpowering myself every day. And you gotta find tools to do that. That's the tool that I use. This is greatness, true greatness. Let's say that I'm the greatest tennis player of all time, okay? Let's say that. Let's say I'm the greatest tennis player of all time. And I did 22 years, I run all the Grand Slams, I have all the, I beat Roger Federer, I'm, I am the best ever. And we're having an interview, and you're talking about my greatness, what I achieved, and I'm retired. Don't play tennis anymore. Haven't touched a racket in years. And you're making me go back through my life. You're kissing my butt about how great I sure. am. And I'm answering your questions. Every question I'm answering it. I'm with you. But in the back of my mind, all I'm thinking about is all the times I could have won those matches that I lost by not bringing my best mindset. You're haunted by all the opportunities that you missed by not bringing your best at that time. When you could have won, but you didn't win because you allowed life to interfere yeah. with that one shot. When you're sitting there getting ready to serve for the match and your mind is not thinking about where that ball placement needs to be, but thinking about your family this, or this at work, or that at work. Mm -hmm. That's greatness. Greatness is your recall on every single shot wow. that you missed throughout a 20 some year career. Every shot, you can go back and say, I was here. This person was in the red shirt there. Greatness is being so aware of the time of life in the second that went by and you can recall like it was yesterday. Greatness is being able to go back there, not making that same mistake again and being haunted by it. That is greatness.